I decided to come back home to Canada, opened up a franchise book and looked for a business to start and uh, decided on cleaning because there's monthly uh, high margins on it and uh, it's recurring revenue. You shared uh, like a unique business model that you run. And so I just wanted to see if you can kind of share that again for us, which is completely different from the traditional sales cycle of commercial cleaning. Yeah. 100%. Revolutionary. Yep. No, made perfect sense. I'm man. <laughs> I could talk to you a long, long time about these type of things. But anyway. Get it to the top. They ain't none of y'all stopping me. Used to say I never get a ring, Charles Barkley. Now I got a wife, got kids on property. Bubble eye beans that look like that be watching me. Okay, I lied about the beans, but that was hard though. I'm still in that black act, but she starred though. Cause that's all it takes. Don't flash it for I'm on my grind, not no more fashion show. What's up, y'all? AJ Simmons here, founder of the Clean Biz Network, aka the Clean the Business Goat. And today, y'all know I got a very special one for y'all. This is probably high demand, especially after the Clean Biz Network conference and the way he killed it there. So I'm going to read my notes here, though, before I keep freestyling. So here we go. I'm interviewing somebody who popped on my radar years ago. Uh, he had a few YouTube videos up back then. And just from those videos, I've been new that this guy knows his stuff. And I, I've been wanting to meet him for a while. We kind of connected, but everything takes time and every time is perfect so without further ado please welcome the founder and operator of one janitorial mr peter bowling what's up peter what's up man how are you i'm good bro i appreciate you for yeah. being here so i'm not yeah, sure if you're familiar that. with it but how we always start the podcast if you don't mind sharing please let us know about where you are roughly as far as revenue goes with your cleaning company uh we're pushing on 10 million this year this nice nice yeah. congrats bro i love that so yeah. first before we unpack how you got to that let's go ahead and just rewind about like who is peter what's your background where you from all of that good stuff <sighs> we're from canada so operate in calgary alberta we actually operate all across canada background is actually in call centers so used to run call centers dropped out of high school to run call centers um ran my own call center with like 150 employees at the age of 18. Uh, ended up leaving that company and doing consulting overseas in the Philippines and India. And then what ended up happening, I had a wife at the time and a child, still have the child. Um, and they didn't want to move to the Philippines. So I decided to come back home to Canada, opened up a franchise book and looked for a business to start and uh, decided on cleaning because there's monthly uh, high margins on it and uh, it's recurring revenue. I love it. I love it. By the way, I'm glad you said there's high margins on it because it's, it's falsely believed that there's not. So I'm glad you made sure you dispelled that myth instantly once we got on here. So you did. You actually just answered us. I was about to say why cleaning instead of any other route, but you just kind of touched on it. It was high margin. So instead, I'm going to go to my next question. What services does one janitorial offer? Uh, we offer commercial contract cleaning. That's it. Like we okay. don't do anything else. Anything else we do is just subcontracted out. Like gotcha. anything else we do, uh, we're built for speed. So we do one thing again and again and again, and that's acquire new contracts that are on a one year contract that stay for a minimum of on average, well, on average, 2.8 years. Everything else to us is irrelevant to it. It's about building a giant base of contracts. And then if we want to start adding stuff later on, we can, but we'll probably just keep scaling the way we scale. Gotcha. What made you go to the commercial route versus that residential or some other route? Uh, you know, like we're 10 ish years in, so a little bit more than that. I think at the beginning, we tried uh, some residential, and residential is a nightmare. Yeah. Logistically, there's just a lot of work to it. And if you actually look at a lot of residential companies, like I've yet to find one residential company that is a national company across the US. Mm -hmm. that is not a franchise company yeah they all seem to be these small little companies that max out at like two or three million dollars and it's just not exciting to me we'll do more than that in new sales just this yeah. year <laughs> right? Right. and i'll see people for 45 years or 40 years like just building this thing and i'm not saying that they don't know a business i'm just i think the residential cleaning business is in is the wrong vehicle to be in gotcha scale. all right Fair enough. Now, how did you come up with your company name, One Janitorial? Uh, no clue. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I have no clue, right? Like it's, yeah. we used to be called uh, 
when we first started, we were crazy clean. Okay. Right. Um, and then I wanted a more professional name and then we went to Oracle building maintenance and then we had a dispute with a company because they said our name was too close to their name. And there was a choice of fighting it legally or which would have costed hundreds of thousands of dollars or switching the name over for like $69. And <laughs> that's just what we did. And we didn't put a lot into marketing for the last name. So it wasn't a big deal for us to switch. Gotcha. Yeah. Who is that Oracle? Is it that Larry Ellison? I think it is. No clue. I don't okay, know. But, okay. I was wondering if you was inspired by that guy because I, I listened to the guy's story and I, I liked it. So no, All we, right. I, I, I chose the name because Oracle means to know everything. So nice. that's why I chose it. Right. But uh, it was just too close to their trademark. So it was uh, easier for us to just change it than fight anything with it. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Now, when you spoke at the Clean Business Network conference, you shared uh, like a unique business model that you run. And so I just wanted to see if you can kind of share that again for us. Just, you know, a quick overview, if you don't mind. Sure. Yeah. So we started off like every other business, which is we have... We had uh, cleaners in buildings that were employees and we had managers over top of them. And I was in a small 50,000 person town and we took over that whole town like fairly quickly. Um, and then we had to go to other cities. And what I realized was having employees and having salespeople in cities, I didn't like how it, how it was. It was like too complex to run. So I started down a journey where what we would do is we would appointment set into a city. We would do the presentation over a screen share of a building. We wouldn't even go down and see the building. And then what would end up happening is after we get it, we would find a partner in that city. We would train them up how to be a successful partner with us through online training and coaching. And then they would go in and take over that contract. So we could go into any city across Canada. It doesn't matter if there's 10,000 people in that city or 2 million, we could find a partner and they would go over and do the services and they would do the inspections on it and they would be the face with the client. And then we handle the customer service issues or any issues that the client has. Yeah. So we handle the sales, we handle the service side of things, they handle the cleaning, and that's how we work it. Nice, it's almost like being a franchise without being a franchise. Yeah, we, we tried to do something with um, like, a, like a partner program where we charged a little bit and we tried it for like, I mean, a little bit. And I, yeah. I just didn't like the whole charging them for contract thing. So mm -hmm. we just decided to give it away to free for them. And then we just take a percentage of the contract. Nice. So let's talk about that. I think that's basically it, right? Because you do have a partner program. So if somebody's watching this right now, like how could they be a partner of one janitorial? Go to one janitorial at the top left-hand corner. There's going to be become a partner, fill out the partner form. And if we have buildings in your area, you'll start to get uh, weekly emails about potential buildings that are, that we have. And then if we decide to choose you, we'll take you through the partner program and we'll get you in a building. Nice. And where is this? Is this just in Canada? Is this in the U.S.? Where, where are we looking? Right now across Canada, by the end of the year, maybe into 2025, it'll be across the U.S. or into the U.S. Nice, nice. Yeah. So could somebody still go up there? Just maybe is there like a waiting list or, or a newsletter or something for now? Just it would just keep checking. Yeah. On. If you guys just uh, one janitorial and then hit that information and in, we'll send you out uh, emails all the time. Perfect. Perfect. All, All right. right. And then if you go to the Peter Boland, that's where we have usually some updates and stuff going on. Nice. On Instagram. Okay. Now, to me, on the surface, let's just say a brand new person is listening to this podcast, right? And they're like, they're listening. I'm like, wait a minute. This guy, Peter, is doing what those internet marketers say that can be done, <laughs> which is, it sounds like he's running a remote cleaning company in the commercial side. We've, we've seen it before in, in the residential side, but they say you're doing it in the commercial side. So I guess my question is, if somebody's brand new right now, no cleaning experience, no anything, could they run the model that Peter is running starting today? Yeah, for sure. Right. That's what we train people to do that are our partners. Right. Like you and in reality, it's, it's all remote at the beginning because you don't have an office. Your office is your home. Yeah. Okay. So, and if you really think about it, every building you have has a janitorial supply store storage mm -hmm. unit. So you have an 
office to hold supplies in every single building that you have. Mm -hmm. So if you purchase the supplies, then you just keep everything in there. There's no need to have an office. Like there's, there, there's zero need unless you are dealing with these massive skyscraper buildings and you're housing your own like auto scrubbers and doing the maintenance in them. And then of course it is. But if you're doing buildings that are $500,000 a month, there's, there's no need. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I love it. Now, I guess what well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to add on that a little bit. So is there any type of skill set that a person would need then since they don't need cleaning experience? Is there anything in particular that you think would help them be more successful than, you know, having this skill versus anything else? So uh, like marketing and sales. So marketing is nothing more than the ability to generate a lead. Okay. So okay. marketing is just lead generation. Yes. So that can be done through a million different ways. We do it through appointment setting. Yeah. Okay. And then sales is the ability to take that lead and close it. Yeah. Okay. So that's the beginning aspect of it. After that, you're looking at like a service skill or operations. How do you build out processes to take a new client from a new client to an onboarding, from an onboarding to finding a right partner, from finding a right partner to training that partner, delivering excellent service, and then continuing that over the duration of the contract. Nice. I, you know, I, I, I see exactly what you're saying, and I agree a thousand percent. So maybe, because I, I, I work with a lot of different types of people, so maybe first coming home from prison that can't even send a good email yet is not quite ready for it but maybe a college guy or not even college guy excuse me fresh, fresh graduated from high school you can speak you can complete a sentence right you have an email address you you, you got the basics all right that person might actually fit yeah like if you have youtube you can right. figure it out right so like it, it all boils down to like skills and action yeah. Right. So you want to learn the skill of appointment setting and you could go onto YouTube or you could go into your program, which is uh, on CBN and learn the skill of it. Yeah. And then you could learn the skill of how to do appointments uh, or how to do walkthroughs. Yep. And then you have a calculator. So like it, it all just comes down to learning every new step of like, like we're trying to scale to 40 million. So I'm trying to learn about the type of infrastructure that a $40 million company has. So we can start building that out now. AI, yeah. we're playing around with AI. So right now, within two weeks, we might be able to even eliminate all of our appointment setters and just use AI to do it. Yeah. yeah. Right. So we just made a 50 grand investment in something. So it's, it's constantly learning new skill sets and then just applying them. And then like tweaking it, it all starts with a hypothesis of what you think will work. You learn the skill set on it and then you tweak it until it's successful. Gotcha. Remind me to ask you about AI, that point you just made after this interview is over. <laughs> right. <laughs> but anyway, I, I'll so, actually, if you give me your phone number after this, yeah. I'll let you have our AI give you a phone call and you could take them through the whole entire presentation. Nice. Like you could all just right, do man. it and then you can call me back. Back, back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we'll then you give, you're going to be blown away. Okay. Like you're going to be blown away. All right, yeah. let's do it. Are you looking to start your own cleaning company? Or maybe you started your cleaning company, but you just need a support group, some mentorship, some guidance. Hell, a bidding calculator just to help you know if you're pricing the job correctly. Join us at cleanbiznetwork.app. That's www.cleanbiznetwork.app today and get on the right track with your cleaning company. We have everything you could possibly need to get you going in the right direction and see why we've been the leading cleaning business consulting company for the past five years and why they call me AJ Simmons, the cleaning business goat. So I can help you just like I've helped and my company has helped thousands of other people start and grow their cleaning companies. Go to the number one source today, www.cleanbiznetwork.app. Thank you. All right, but so people swear that there's nobody that wants to work these days so i know you do the subcontractor model i know that's what has always been my preference and i have my reasons for it but to this point how are you able to find these good cleaners to keep up with the contracts i think it's because they're thinking in ones and twos right they're thinking in well i've hired one or two people and nobody wants to work and when you want to build something great you have to think of things on a mass scale it's like going and doing one or two walkthroughs and being like, oh, I didn't get any clients. Cleaning industry must not work. Well, yes. no, go on 500 walkthroughs, 500 door knocks, and then, and then tell me, 
but while <laughs> right. you're on the 500 go all in on all those so like yeah. we we have a team of three people that all they do is they do like 80 interviews a week to find partners and out of those 80 interviews they do we will bring on like nine partners only so like I would say they're just not doing enough of the legwork up front. They're thinking in ones and twos and they're jumping from, oh, I can do this to it's impossible too quickly. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a thousand percent. All right, cool. Now at the, at the conference, you also mentioned that you had a local sales team. Then you eventually switched to pretty much everything offshore. So yeah. I guess, why did you go virtual versus uh, in, in person? Um... <sighs> I went virtual for a few reasons. One is I wanted to be home for my kids more. So we, we got rid of our office space and now everything we do is from distance, right? So all of our team works from home, period. So now I could be there to get my kids up. Like I got my kids up in the morning, sent them off to school, get to be here there when they get home before I was at the office at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. And I was leaving at 6 p.m. So right. we did that for that reason. The reason why we also went over to overseas was after COVID, we would put an ad in for like SDRs or, or appointment setters. And what would end up happening is we would get 10 applicants where we used to get like a hundred. Yeah. Um, and we could only search for it inside of Calgary. And people didn't want to drive downtown to our downtown office. And the, the quality of person we we're getting wasn't the best. So when I was looking at it, we were paying maybe 4K after CPP and EI for somebody to book three appointments. So what I did is I built a sales process to hire somebody overseas where all they do is they're looking for easy appointments that they're not having to sell anybody. And we have for half the cost, we had them doing the exact same number. Wow. So that's the reason why we just, we kept playing with it and we keep playing with it to get better and better. I think when I was at your conference, you know, our close was like 25 ish percent. Now it's mm -hmm. 40. Wow. Our SIP percent was 50. Now it's 70. It's because <laughs> we keep playing with it to yeah. increase the overall value of it. Yeah. Now do you, I can't stress enough. I know I said it many times, but your model is just amazing. Like <laughs> it's, it's genius, but I love it. All right, cool. Thanks. So, now, do you ever run into an issue with pricing for them? Because I know you do like virtual walkthroughs and all of that. So do you guys ever get situations where it's like the pricing is like, oh, all right, we went a little bit too low on that one or well, too high is never an issue. But you ever have time where you kind of like, oh, shit, we might have fucked up on that one. Um, No, like out of 100 quotes that we give, maybe there's one. Yeah. Like you need to think we're, we're in the, the sweet spot of $700 for our average sale. Okay. So if we're off, we're off by like 30 bucks, right? If we're over, we're over by 30 bucks. Like it, they're not deal breakers. If you're getting into contracts that are like three grand a month, which is the reason why we, part of the reason why we don't do them is this not the full, maybe only 10 to 15% of it is now, if you're off, you're off 300. Yes. Right. So, and that can be an issue. Uh, and I find that buildings over $2,500, what tends to end up happening it, per month is they require a lot of logistics, multiple people on site every single time. Uh, you're tracking how long it takes to get a mop bucket from one area to another area. How many times you have to change it over? All this equates to pricing. Once you're under twenty five hundred dollars a month, logistics are, are not really a problem. Nice. So our pricing is not an issue. Square footage works one hundred percent. Got it. That's perfect. The only time we're off is when. Like a, a client will be like, oh yeah, our building's 2,500 square feet. We'll review it on Google. We'll see that it's 2,500 square feet. We'll be like, hey, is there any other floors? They're like, no. And then we we sign them for 2,500. We get there. Then he's like, oh yeah, we actually want you to do the second floor. <laughs> right. And then we have to go back and renegotiate it. So like, yeah. that's usually the only time. Gotcha. Now, how are the, 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 the clients, are they typically surprised by the element of a virtual walkthrough do they seem receptive of it like how does that go there's no issue for it we're closing 40 percent, so that means we're close to almost one out of two signing within nine days of Absolutely. doing an appointment right but i guess i guess what I'm, I'm i'm trying to really ask is like okay have you had situations where it's like they're accustomed to people coming out and doing it? Sure. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe one out of 30 will be like, hey, can we have somebody go down? 
we'll be like, yeah, sure, not a problem. Let's just do the virtual one first and then we'll send somebody down, which is what we do anyway. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So like after they sign, we send somebody down to verify it anyway. Right. Um, but uh, if they ask for somebody to send down, we just send down one of our partners. Funny, what closes on sending a partner down is 20%. No, 25%. Hmm. Closes on virtual or 40. And I can imagine why, because it's a lot quicker too. It's, it's simple. Like we'll, we'll get done the presentation and we'll just sign. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So like our, our average time to close a deal is nine business days. Damn. Not even two weeks. Which is completely different from the traditional sales cycle of commercial cleaning. Yeah. 100%. Revolutionary. Yeah. It's usually like 30 it. days. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. If somebody wanted to try switching to virtual walkthroughs, what advice would you give them uh, for closing deals that way? I like, I'd say don't. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you a two prong approach. If you're only operating in one city, don't. Go down, see the client, see the building. You're going to be better at it um, because like you're probably already better at it because you've done it a lot of times before. Um, so I would say don't. Like it is very, very complex the way we do it. It's, it's not simple in it in any way we all. At all. Like, there's a very stringent process. And if it's not followed, that 40% close could go down to 5% like that. Where if you're doing walkthroughs, like we have a partner go do walkthrough that has no real sales training and they're still closing 25%. Mm. Right. So if you have a little bit of sales training, you could probably get up to 40 on a walkthrough right. uh, when you do it. So I would not suggest it if you're doing it in the city. If you're trying to operate in three or four cities, sure, give it a shot. Damn. But okay. just expect to like, expect it to take a hell of a lot longer to figure out than you're right. anticipating at least six months right just like and any, to like any... hire somebody to do it very very complex yeah like very very complex it takes a month and a half for somebody to get up to doing it correctly the follow-ups all of it like there's a million little steps like we send coffee out to people yeah. as one of the things for closing we do like um thank you cards that we send them with there's a million little things we do yeah. that equal the 40 percent close i know sometimes people hear it and they're like oh they just do a, a digital walkthrough and then <laughs> right. no there's like there's a pre-presentation there's something we send them beforehand there's the presentation where it's we're on with them then there's like email afterward then there's coffee that we send thank you cards then they're like there's like a million little things we do in order to hit that number yeah love it now you told me something this wasn't all my questions but I just thought about something. You told me something uh, before we started recording about roughly about how much you're paying yourself per month. And then you also told us on camera uh, that you're doing about roughly about 10 million a year. So I noticed that you're probably taking home for yourself about less than 5% of the gross, which is not what we all typically do, right? We all make that mistake of overpaying ourselves. So I wanted to see if you could kind of touch on like, I guess, what would be an ideal percentage of someone to for someone to pay themselves out of the company's gross revenue? Uh, I guess the question depends on what you're trying to do, right? Okay. If you're doing five million, right, and you're doing a gross revenue, but you're not really like scaling and you're happy with the five million and you're doing enough to just keep there, mm -hmm. like you're probably taking home a million out of that. Yeah. Because you're not investing in a lot of stuff. So, I mean, take out the million if you want. Right. Like, if you're happy with it, take it out. Like, last year, I think I made 70 grand. I made 70 grand only because, and I sold a house because I was like, I want to go from where we are to 10 million as quick as humanly possible. And I need to figure all this out. So, I had to literally cut my salary. I had to cut, like, sell a house. And I yep. pushed all that cash in and it worked out now. And now, next year, I can make 2 million if I want. You know, so like it, it's really dependent on what you're trying to do. If you're trying to scale and scale fast, it's going to eat a lot of capital. Yep. So that capital needs to come from your salary. Yep. If you're not trying to scale, like there's been years where I made a million. Yeah. You know, we weren't trying to scale. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, yep. so it really depends what you're trying to do. Yeah. So like I assigning a percentage to it, very difficult. Now, if you're a new company, what should you assign? 
you should assign zero. (laughs) (laughs) All your money needs to go back into it to to growing it, right? Like, I don't think I took a salary out for the first year, year and a half. First year we made 250 in sales. So yeah, I lived on craft dinner. I get it. And it's so hard to accept that. It's like fun. It's hard building a business, going through the shit. Then it's like, all right, then you do all of this just to say, okay, and guess what I'm going to make from this? Virtually nothing for the first yeah. you know, year or whatever time I'm out spending it takes. And I, I crashed last year. I had a lot of different hurdles where I'll give you one example where Stripe kind of threw, like I got in trouble. They started holding half of all of my damn revenue. And so things got tight and I'm looking at the budget like, what the fuck? I mean, I know. I pay myself well, but I was like, I know I'm not fucking trying to take all the money here. So I'm like, well, what is the deal? And I had to realize, you know what? The biggest expense was my salary. And so I even got a video on my YouTube channel where I show, all right, I'm moving out of this fucking mini mansion. I'm paying too much for this. I'm starting over because I really want to scale this company. And I realized I'm in the fucking way of it scaling. So 100%. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And it's yeah. so hard to deal with that shit, but it is what it is. I mean, scaling is different. I mean, like you said, if you're comfortable and you kind of coasting and you want to incrementally grow fine do you think yeah, like, you can afford it do you think like like this year I'll probably make half a million yeah. you know like and like that's a rough number but if i cut the growth like cut it i wouldn't need as much on service so i could cut a huge part of service yeah. okay and i could keep just enough to where we don't drop well i could probably make 1.5 million right you know like but then i'm like i'm stuck at 1.5 forever yeah and it's like forever. okay well, how much more do you really need to do today you know like a half a million dollar lifestyle is pretty damn good do you really need a 1.5 million dollar lifestyle right now i mean that's objective but i'm just you know pointing out in, in, a, t- in I, a sense of okay you know, so you, you know what th- this 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 is a really good conversation so yeah. three four years ago when i was making almost a million mm-hmm. right when we had a different model ish um and we weren't trying to scale and grow yeah. uh we were trying to kind of just maintaining and playing around with a few things um i made a ton of money and whatever it was fine yeah. okay like oh yeah sure this is fine i could do whatever the hell i wanted to do you know what i mean like trips car like i went through midlife crisis so i had like <laughs> yeah. the car the suits the all of it right yeah but as i've grown older and as i realize the world is changing at a rapid pace and not in the benefit of the middle class and the little guy, Absolutely. you need far more money than you think you need. Absolutely. So for me, the goal is to exit between 30 and 40 million within five years. So if I want to exit for that number so that no matter what happens to the world, I'm safe and my family's safe, I need to take all this money invested in for growth. So my goal was to get the SaaS part of my business to 10 million a year because I feel like at 10 million a year, then I can get it to the multiples where I can get close to about a hundred million dollars on a sale. Same thought process that you just described. So yeah. why three for you? Because I know. So I just told you my 10. Um honestly, it's probably because I'm thinking too small. And I chose 40 when I should have chosen 100. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, like, you want to say it that way? It's, it's probably just, I wasn't thinking big enough. Um, I gotcha. could probably exit at 100. Um, yeah. It would take a few more years um, to do, but I could probably exit it. I just, if I exit at 40, let's say, by the time my taxes and everything's done, I'm around 30. I grab the 30, I enroll that into real estate. I have yep. 120 million of assets under management, um, which making six, five to six percent on, I'm at 1.5 million a year with a salary of 750 that I can retire on. Yeah. So that was, so it's kind of like my minimum Yep. and I might get there in three, four years. Like when people start looking at buying a company too, especially like ours, uh, cleaning, they want to be able to see that they could come in and take this company to the next level. They're like, oh, okay, with our resources, we could come in and take this company to 40. If we're already at a hundred, they're gonna be like, man, this is a lot of money. And how much more room do we have to go? Right. Right. So the, the sale might get a little bit harder. Yes. 
So I actually yeah. seen that already starting to happen too. A lot of these people, they were getting a 10 X and 20 X multiples for these companies, even in the SaaS world are starting to go down. So but yeah. great point. All right. Like, that's like going to be the part. We, we built a company up. like a SaaS company where we right. have salespeople and we, we have it this way because our multiple can be closer to eight to 10 when we sell, where if we're a cleaning company and multiple is usually four. Gotcha. So I doubled the multiplier by the way we built it. So that was yep. also part of the reason. Yep. No, it made perfect sense. I'm, man, <laughs> I could talk to you a long, long time about these <laughs> things. But anyway, 